I'm Leanne Bullington and I work for the University of Arkansas Division of Agriculture Research and Extension. I'm the FCS educator uh, and I work with new agents. Jessica is one of our relatively new agents. Jessica, introduce yourself. Hello everyone, my name is Jessica Angel and I'm the Family Consumer Sciences agent in Cleburne County. Great. Well, you know, um, we just are fortunate that we live in a state that we have so many different things that we grow. Absolutely. And, you know, we're really pretty well known for our cattle production and our beef production. Mm -hmm. And so, with grilling season coming up, I think it's a good idea that maybe we talk some about grilling some beef. I think that's a great idea. Well, you know, I think it really starts when you when you go out to shop and when mm -hmm. we purchase it. So what are your tips for purchasing beef? So my tips are um, when you go to the grocery store, um, make sure that your beef is always a cherry red or just a red. Um, a lot of times if you see a discoloration, that usually just means that it could be bad, but more or less it's actually um, the fact that it has less oxygen. So. Um, it's best to choose this, and if you want to, you know, store it at home, right. um, you can put it in the freezer for up to two weeks, and or you can just use it within the next couple of days. Right. So. Okay. So if I bought that at the store, I would just take it home, mm -hmm. and if I was going to use it pretty soon, mm -hmm. I could just put it in the fridge. Absolutely. Okay. That mm -hmm. sounds great. Yes, ma'am. All right. So what kind of steak do you have there? So today we have the blank steak and a lot of people kind of shy away from this just because it can it's known to be a tough cut of meat right. so it really just depends on you know how you cut it mm -hmm. um and then you know how you prepare it i understand that you know a lot of times we really like some sirloin mm -hmm. or some ribeyes or something Absolutely. but that flank steak when i've been looking at them they're usually less expensive. They are. This is a great cut of meat if you are really um, trying to, you know, budget, you know, with grocery store prices nowadays, things are up. And so this is a great, um, I wouldn't say substitute, but this is a great um, way to have a nice cut of meat that mm -hmm. will fit within your budget. Great. Yes, ma'am. Well, you know, some of the ways that I remember that we're gonna that we can tenderize and really get a lot of flavor is that we can use things like a marinade. Mm -hmm. yes, and so marinades are usually they have oils in them, mm -hmm. and they have some sort of acid, and it may be lemon juice or lime juice. Mm -hmm. And your oils, you could use olive oil or any type of vegetable oil mm -hmm. or whatever type of oil that you really like and that that acid is really going to break down those muscles. It sure is. And then that oil is going to add that uh, the moisture. moisture to yes. it that we really need. And so then the third thing that we want in that marinade is whatever our aromatics are going to be. So whatever spices that you really want to put in there. So you can really make your own marinade. You, you can sure have can. all kinds of different recipes, but if there's something that you really like, mm -hmm. you can make it your own flavor. Thing. Yes. And but we're not using a marinade today. Nope. We're actually going to use a dry rub seasoning. Okay. Um, this is actually one of my favorite dry rub seasonings that I use at home. Okay. And so it's super simple to make. All right. Um, and you pretty much have all these ingredients in your pantry already. That so, makes it great. That way we don't have to shop some more exactly, for it. Exactly. Yes. And so um, today what we're going to have is we've got um, some chili powder. Mm -hmm. We've got some uh, ground cumin. We've got some oregano. We've got some cayenne pepper, some right. ground thyme, yep. some garlic. We've got some uh, black pepper. And uh -huh. then we've got a little bit of heat today is going to be some red pepper flakes. Sounds wonderful. But you can use any type of, you know, you can do a marinade. Um, you can also add different flavorings that you choose. You know, if you don't want um, all the heat, you can mm -hmm. just add a pinch of red pepper flakes or you can omit those as well. Um, but it's really what you want to make it. So this steak is right. actually, um, it really takes on the flavor. So Sounds wonderful. Yes, it's fantastic. Well, let's see how you're going to do that, Rob. Absolutely. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to, you know, I've got it here in a bowl and I'm just going to sprinkle just like so, mm -hmm. and I really want to get a good coat on it. So can you get too much on it? I don't think so. You don't think so? I, I don't think I bet so. not either. No. I think it would make kind of a nice crusty. Oh, tip. yes. 
Yes, absolutely. So it is a fantastic seasoning. I'm just going to kind of rub it in here, just kind of pat it. Yeah. Um, that way we don't lose all the seasoning. And then I'm just going to flip it over and I'm going to do the same side. Okay. Uh, other side with the same seasoning. So I just want to sprinkle it on here. So I've actually, yes, thank you. I've actually got my grill pan. Um, okay. We had it, you know, uh, heating up. So mm -hmm. um, next I'm going to spray it with a um, oil. Um, today I'm using avocado oil because uh -huh. of the smoke point. Okay. So um, usually, you know, if olive oil has a lower smoke point than this, right. but this way um, we'll spray it on here. And so we're cooking about medium heat today. So I'm expecting between 300 to 400 degrees Fahrenheit okay. um, on our grill. And so that way um, we don't have any burnt taste to um, from the grill from our oils. Right, that's great because yes, I know sometimes it can really smoke. Oh yes, And then can. you'll get that kind of charred mm -hmm. taste yes, that's not very good. And you can also use safflower oil that also has a um, high smoke point. So uh -huh. I'm just gonna make sure that my grill pan, and as you can see, it's already starting to smoke, right. which is fantastic. Looks great. Yes, ma'am. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna place it season side down on the grill pan. Okay. Kind of shake off the excess if we need to because I've All got right. a pat in there. Ooh, we hear that sizzle. Yum. Yes, yeah, so we're just gonna let this hang out. Okay, about how long does it cook? Um, it really just depends. So with charcoal, um, it's usually between um, 11 to 16 minutes, but mm -hmm. with gas grilling, um, it's 16 to 21 minutes. Okay. So um, we're going to let this get up to temperature about 145 with an internal temperature, and then we're gonna take it off the heat. Sure. Um, and we're gonna let it rest and okay. kind of hang out. And right. then it's going to, Roughly, we're gonna we're trying to get a medium warm pink center. So great, we'll that's exactly off. the way I like I know, it. That me just too. kind of pink in the middle, but we want to make sure that it's our food properly. safety is. Yes. We, that's mm -hmm. very important. That's very important. And so um, we'll pull this from the grill. We'll flip both sides and um, let it rest, and then we'll slice it. So this is a great alternative that we're cooking inside on yes. the grill instead of outside. Yes. So if the weather's bad or whatever. Mm -hmm. Or maybe you don't have a big outside grill. Mm -hmm. So this is a great way to do it. It sure know? is. So we're just gonna kinda let this hang out, um, cook it for another five, just until we kinda get these edges. You can mm -hmm. still see here, it's still a little bit pink for us. We'll right. take an internal temperature and then we'll let it sit and rest. That sounds wonderful. So my goal is to reach an internal temperature of 155 degrees Fahrenheit um, or 160 and that way we'll have that wonderful looking piece of meat. That Sounds we great. Yes. Are you ready to take it off? I think, yes, ma'am. All righty. Yum. Yes, yeah, so you can just that set your timer. Delicious. Um, and then that way you can, um, you know, roughly three to five minutes mm -hmm. is usually um, the rule of thumb. And then we will slice into it. Sounds great. So. I think we've got a really good sauce that we're going to put we across do. this. Yes. So let's talk about the ingredients for that sauce. What is that sauce again? This is called a chimichurri sauce. Yeah. And it is fresh because, you know, we're, like I said, we're getting into um, the summer months and grilling season, and what better way to use those herbs in our garden? So today we're going to have, um, in a regular chimichurri sauce, um, you're going to have some parsley. Uh -huh. um, today we have Italian parsley. Right. Um, you're also going to have some red pepper flakes for that extra kick. Yep. Um, but of course, if you're not a spicy person, you can always, um, you know, just do a little pinch. Mm -hmm. um, you're going to have um, some olive oil, some um, vinegar. Mm -hmm. Today we're using a uh, white vinegar. Okay. Um, we've got some. But you could use some apple cider if you want. You could. You sure could. You could okay. use some red wine vinegar. Oh um, yeah. Rice vinegar. It's just really yeah. however okay. you want to make it. Okay. Um, we've got some uh, fresh green onions. You know those are in the garden yes. as well. Um, we've got four cloves of garlic, and um, you can chop this if you want to, like I did today. Uh -huh. um, it's going to all go in a food processor, right? Um, so it'll get chopped up, right? And um, we also have a pinch of salt, um, some black pepper, and some fresh lemon juice, right? So if you don't have one of those great big fancy food processors, mm -hmm. can you use like just one of those little chopper things? You sure can. You can really make this the consistency that you want to if you really want it to um, 
have bigger pieces in it, you can totally do that. Um, but if you want it, you know, more pureed like we have today here, mm -hmm. we, I think we have a really good combination. I, do, don't I you think, think so too. I think it's going to be really smooth it's, and really nice. Yes, it's going to be really delicious. And so it's just really whatever you want to do. And but it could be chunky. If it you could wanted be it chunky. kind of a chunky. Mm -hmm. taste. It's kind of like salsa. Right. You know, some people like chunky salsa with the big, great tomatoes in it, uh -huh. or some people just like it really smooth. Right. So um, I think we have a good combination here today, but it's just really your preference. Okay. So you've gotten it off the grill now. Yes, it's been resting um, for about five minutes now, so um, I think we're ready to slice. Wonderful. Now, flank steak, you slice it a little bit different than you do you other do. steak mm -hmm. because of the grain of the meat. Is that right? Yes, that is correct. So. My rule of thumb is to kind of look and see where the meat, you know, the striations of the meat are. Mm -hmm. And so, of course, you're going to need a sharp knife. So, sure. it's actually going this way. Right. So, I'm going to cut this way. So, you're going to cut diagonally. I'm going to cut diagonally. The grain. Yes, absolutely. Okay. And that way, um, it just makes it for a really tender slice. Right. And so we're looking for a warm pink center, is yes, that right? Yes, that is correct. So, um, I let this sit. We pulled it off the grill, as mm -hmm. you can see. Um, at about 145 degrees Fahrenheit, right. and so um, it's had an internal temperature when we um, before we sliced it of about 155 to 160, okay. which is exactly what we were sure. trying to achieve. You can, um, if you like your meat to be well done, you can always um, cook it to and uh, have an internal temperature of 165 degrees sure. or 170. Um, if you like it a little bit of a medium rare, mm -hmm. um, a 145 internal temperature would be um, the correct temperature for that. Right, that looks great. I like mine, just that little bit of pink. Oh, I yes. feel like the moisture, it still has a lot of moisture it in does. it. It does. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when you cook it more than that, it draws out a little bit to me. But because you've let it rest, mm -hmm. it, we're not going to be losing that moisture on there. No, and you're getting those nice thin slices. I love thin slices. You can always cut this however, you know, if you want some thicker strips, you can do that that as well mm -hmm. um, but just for you know I prefer thin so. sure and if you're going to use it like for a fajita or mm -hmm. something along those lines yeah, yeah. you can always um, you know cut it um, you can always <clears throat> when you do this you can always you know slice it into strips if you wanted to sure. um, it's just kind of really however you know you want to whatever you're making will uh, fit best just like what we have over here Okay. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, we've just got nicely. You can see we have that nice warm pink center here. Right. And so I'm just going to take some of our chimichurri sauce. Okay. we still got some nice juices coming through. And I'm just going to kind of just drizzle. Yum. Yes. And so you can always keep this table side too as well. Sure. In case, you know, some of your guests want some extra, extra sauce. Extra on it. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, it's just really, you know, however you want to uh, make it. So, but yeah, it's, it's yeah, beautiful. Me. And that green just really pairs nicely with that flavor. It just, really, it's gorgeous. Yes, it is. And then, so if you wanted to do like fajitas mm -hmm. or something, then you can just use pretty much anything you want to. You sure can. So we've got some avocados mm -hmm. and some nice lime. Wonderful. Yes. I think these are going to be They're delicious. They're going to be delicious, yes. And the fact is, is that, you know, so many steaks, like a ribeye, all the times it has a lot of fat to it, it does. doesn't it? Yes. And we want it all marbled in there. That's mm -hmm. the reason that's so tender and so yes. good. But yet this is a very lean piece of meat. It is. It's actually one of the leanest ones on the market. So flank steak is um, actually right underneath the sirloin right. so, of the cow. So, um, you know, it's it's a pretty lean cut of meat. It's great. Um, it has less fat, so it's good for heart health, you know, heart health. And mm -hmm. um, it's you can marinate it and make it super tender. Great. Well, I sure hope that everybody enjoys doing some grilling this yes. summer, don't you? Yes. I think it'll be a great time. Yes, I think so too.